What's going on guys? It's your boy Boom Boom Tisk. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're installing S3 Suspension Street and Track Coilover Kit on my EK hatch. Later on, we'll be taking it out for a drive as well, so stick around. By the way, my stall has the steepest incline to drive up on, but you already know your boy gotta make it work somehow. This ground control Kony combo has seen over 70k miles of slam street driving, track days, and road trips over the last 8 years. We're going to try to match the current ride height with the new suspension to minimize alignment changes. And right now we're probably at about 4 inches. Removal of the old suspension is pretty straightforward. I loosen the upper and lower control arm bolts to allow for easy movement and to keep from overstraining the bushings. In the rear, we remove the bolts and sway bar end links to allow for the control arms to fully swing out of the way. Since my interior is already gutted, it's easy to access the strut mount bolts. This setup is the first full threaded body coilover I've ever ran on this car, and it's nice to finally have some proper preload on the springs. Like most coilovers on the market today, ride height is adjusted by spinning the body of the shock up or down the bottom fork and locking it with the perch. Also on my application, helper springs are included in the rear. Everything looks well made and it's nice to know that S3 is located in SoCal in case I need any tech support. New coilovers are going in. Now with the suspension on the car, let's take a look at what else is in the box. A good snug on that bottom perch. New coilovers are installed and now we are tightening down the bolts loosened during the installation process. I recommend always clocking the bushings by raising the arms near static position before fully tightening everything. This could be also done with a floor jack or a jack stand and the aim is to reduce any chance of the suspension binding. Damper adjustments can be made by clicking the knob either clockwise or counterclockwise. Installing the knob onto the top mounts was particularly satisfying. And that's it! There she is! So, all buttoned up, everything is clocked and tightened down, wheels are torqued down as well, and we worked on the height adjustment as much as we can to try to match the old height. And we're still at about the same height on the pinch well. It hovers around four inches or four to a quarter. However, visually, I feel like the front is sitting a little higher. Um, well, just a little bit. So maybe the next thing to do is we'll, if we have to match it or even out the rear, but I don't know. I'm pretty excited. It looks good, but what really matters is how it's going to drive. What's going on guys? It's your boy out here, Boom Boom Tisk. Thanks for tuning in. We got the EK out here today. We outside and we're gonna take a nice little easy Sunday drive. And let me guys give you a little tour of the EK right now. This EK Honda Civic has been tuned for circuit use. Originally a base trim EJ6, this hatch is now sporting EK9 exterior upgrades. It is a lightweight CX model, making it ideal for racing modification. Under the hood is a stock V16A2 with an Integra Type R header and a Fujitsubo muffler. Chassis rigidity has been increased with a front and rear Cusco strut bar and an auto power race roll bar. Interior has been removed for further weight reduction. On today's video, we will be featuring S3 Suspension's Street and Track Coilover Kit. It is a fully threaded shock with swift springs as well as helper springs in the rear. Damper settings are 32-way adjustable. S3 coilovers are becoming increasingly popular. Let's see if they're worth the hype. Wow, very aggressive attack from the start. Please go safely. The light tuned B16 seems underpowered for the uphill climb, but it sounds good. How about those coilovers? Is the new suspension better than before? Let's try the downhill. This lightweight FF platform with its high revving 1.6 liter engine favors the downhill indeed. We must manage our speed to keep the car in control. The tires aren't even warm yet.
turning it down a notch from attack mode to a mild spirited drive to get a better feel of the responsiveness. The difference with the stiffer spring rates is definitely noticeable and the handling seems very tight. Aside from the singing notes of VTech, there is silence in the cabin. Eurobeat intensifies. The S3 Street and Track Coilover Kit is noticeably stiffer than the old suspension setup. Turn in response is increased and stability at higher speeds has improved. Previously, we've had issues with the rear unsettling under heavy braking, and so we are relearning the characteristics of the car. The car transitions well and allows for quick steering adjustments without much fuss. All in all, we are enjoying the drive and I think it's time to switch back to my normal voice. enjoyed that drive as much as I did. Definitely had a good time out there cruising this thing on some of my favorite local roads. Uh, what can I say? The S3 coilovers on there. First impressions, noticeably stiffer than what I was used to. The old ground control Coney coilover setup was an 8K front and a 7K rear, which in my opinion now is on the soft side, especially using it for track duty. However, at the time when I purchased those coilovers, I was daily driving this car. It was seeing a lot more street use at the time. And so I think it was suitable for them. But now just 
I feel like I'm on a more updated setup. It's got more modern technology, especially with having a full threaded body coilover. This is my first uh, full coilover on this car. Not to say that the ground control conies aren't a tried and true combo, and they are. They're, I mean, they're a great setup, but um, it feels like this is more up to date. It feels more relevant. I think it's gonna be able to put more competitive lap times down at the track too, so we'll have to see that in the near future here. But what can I say? I mean, the S3 coilovers, as far as the ride goes, like I said, it's stiffer than what I was used to. However, it's not unbearable. Um, it's probably more on the aggressive side for a street setup, I will say to be honest, but it does still absorb bumps really well. Even out there on those back roads, we were like driving full speed over to cattle guards. I used to slow down like a pretty good amount before I would go over that stuff, but with the suspension setup now, we're just sailing right over it and it's, it's not bad. Like, and then also there's a lot of imperfections in the road, a lot of cracks, a lot of little dips. You can start to feel the stiffness of the suspension on the dips, but it absorbs the cracks very well and it doesn't like upset the car. I think with the stiffer spring rate, this is just my theory. I mean, I could be wrong, but I used to not feel very confident with this car on hard braking because the car would nosedive really hard. And then again, like I'm just guessing, but my, when it nosedives, the rear of the car loses all the weight and all the weight transfers to the front and therefore I would always lock up the rear brakes. The car's got front and rear Hawk HP Plus brake pads, 40-40 um, prop valve, so I spent a lot of time trying to dial in the brake bias. At first it used to be uneven because I had like weaker pads in the front, but now with the matching pads, I always had an issue with the rears locking up. Um, and I will definitely be interested to see how the stiffer spring rate will affect that, especially at the track. Hopefully we could have a little bit more braking confidence in the hard braking zones. Um, obviously we didn't really get to try any of that out there. We're just kind of, you know, still taking it pretty easy because it's, today we're just driving by feel. Uh, we're getting a feel for the characteristics of the car with the new coilovers. And I will also say, I think I feel like the car transitions better and like linked in turns and or in sections, that kind of thing. Especially if you, let's say you have like a, a bank and then another bank in the opposite corner. And it like, you can, you can feel the car settle in it pretty well um, it, and it's also also interesting with the stiffer spring rate it was kind of windy in some sections out there today especially driving out and you'd hear the wind but you don't feel the car move and so that was a good feeling because I've driven at the track on days when it's super windy and then like it's just it's kind of an unsettling feeling because you'll feel the wind hit the side of the car and then the car just kind of shifts so I'm hoping that the stiffer spring rates will um, help that feel better <laughs> and not feel as sketchy but I mean what else can I say as far as the like even with the stiffer spring rates I do also feel like the dampening settings are you know it, it does plenty well it's not a hint of bounciness at all right now I have the car at um, like 20 clicks front and rear so it's like what a, th a two thirds of a weight before being full stiff I think it's a 32 or a 36 um, weight adjustability on the damper adapting settings it's still not full stiff and and I'm still playing around with that at a 10 click it was a little bit more bouncy but as soon as you turn it up to 20 it firmed up the shocks a lot more so with this setup now it feels nice and rigid I do feel like the suspension now it does complement like the other mods that this car has for suspension um, like the new coil lovers feels good with the alignment settings the car's got negative four degrees camber negative three in the rear it's also got like the you know the R compound you know the 200 Trevor tires and the bracing and all that and it's like I had this car all, all the setup was so track oriented but the coil lovers themselves were so soft especially at the relatively low ride height it was at it was noticeably difficult sometimes to you know get a good feel of the car so yeah but Luckily, we didn't really have to raise the car. I think the ride height is almost the same. It might be a tad bit higher in the front and, but I think for the most part, the car matches. The rear is not threaded all the way down, but of course I want it to be even and I did measure the jack points. So yeah, it's like four inches from the jack points in the front, like before I took the coil up, uh, the ground controls off. And I think we're just about there four inches now. Yeah, so S3 suspension coil levers, like I said, I am not sponsored by S3. Um, but I'm definitely satisfied with the setup, with the with the product that they have, um, you know, introduced to us and put on the market. So um, it's also cool because I know a lot of guys are running them at the track. They are very popular with the road racing scene here out here in SoCal. A lot of guys are using them. Really fast drivers too. So 
I wanted to try it for myself and hopefully uh, hopefully I'll be a little bit faster right so um, anyways hope you guys enjoy the video I hope this helps you guys um, make a coilover decision if you're looking for your 90s Honda they do also have other uh, applications available like BMWs and like even newer chassis cars too so yeah um, if you're looking for coilovers definitely give them a consideration but besides that we're going to end it here for now the ultimate test is where we take this thing back out to the track this car is going to be more track focused in the near future so i'll keep you guys updated on that but for now you guys have yourselves a good one and peace out